I will call the uh, special session of the Board Policy Review Committee to order and ask for an approval of the agenda. I move to approve the agenda. A second. Roll call Gonzalez here. I guess I didn't do a roll call. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. I. <laughs> um, Mulvaney Henry for the agenda. I. Ann Groneman. I. I would also note that for the record that those are the committee members, uh, board members that are present at the meeting. Do you need to say that I'm sitting in for Jeff? I, um, I think it's now on the record. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Probably should have an email. So whatever order, whatever, whatever order the committee to take first. Anybody have a preference? I think the procedure board rules of procedure. Yes, please. Bring those first. Yes, please. Taylor was excited to go ahead and display this on the screen as well. These documents. They should okay. walk around. Sure. Sadly, my Moscow copy is in the car. Sorry, I'm a, okay. a minute late. Well, at 35 was not good. So. <laughs> I wondered what happened to you. I was thinking you were. I was kept looking for an email. To... I was coming. I was coming. Um, are we still for something? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so, um, and Mary, thank you for sitting in for Jeff. I know that um, this is very, very last minute for you. Um, you know, and you may have had an opportunity to review these. You may not have. Tom, I'm certain you've had an opportunity to review. I have, but um, not every single one. Of understood. Them. Understood. I, I mean, I, I think. Refresh and renew. I'm, mm -hmm. I, you know, one of my biggest, um, I don't want to say, you know, I guess concerns is, I think it is with all of our policies at this point is, um, some of them haven't been looked at in a very long time. Right. And they need to be modernized. They need to be updated, right, for, for many different things. Um, and that's the lens that I was looking at these through. So just a preparatory comment. Um, so now I'm trying to think back to my, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, in 1.1, uh, I know that we have held regular session meetings on days other than the first and third Wednesdays. Um, with unanimous consent of the board. And I just don't see that reflected in here. Do, should we? Or you could put, right, shall, you could even be generic to say, shall generally be held. Would that work? Could, or you, or you can put, or they can, or maybe moved with advance notice. I would, you know, however you wanted to do it. After a year, you could put or as otherwise agreed upon. I don't know. Yes. Yes, you could do it that way by a quorum of the board or what, which makes it a little difficult because that's the one area where you don't have to, like picking a date is not necessarily, if you do that, not in an open meeting, it's not a violation because you have to be able to set it, but that's a little hard than to set quorum. So. You could say, or as otherwise noticed. Or could we just call that not a regular meeting? I could just add a sentence after that first sentence. Well, but but it wouldn't be a special meeting. It would be a regular meeting. You know, for example, at least in my experience, when APPA or AWWA falls during the week, of right. thing, we generally move that. Right. 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 So that wouldn't be the third Wednesday in this case in June. Okay. You see what I'm saying? And so okay. I, just something along the lines to, and again, if I have my markup burning, I'm sorry, I don't. Nicole, um, <clears throat> I, I just think we, again, just to. An acknowledgement that's not always the case. Right. And not at 700 Minnesota. And at 540. It should be modernized. It's with the correct address, though. Um, 
Did you have anything else on one dot? Not on one dot. Not, not on one. Go ahead then. Okay. Next okay. up. Okay. Uh, okay. Written notice, this is one dash two. Written notice of such meeting shall be prepared and given to the general manager and each board member. Who prepares that written notice? Special meeting, uh, yeah, I guess it's a special meeting. Written notice of such meeting shall be prepared and given to the general. That be utility staff. I think practically speaking, it's you know David Melhoff emails. Well, I was going to say it and left at his or her usual place of residence. That certainly needs to be updated or um, yeah, you know, sent via electronic mail or something like that. Scratch right? that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you could just say written notice shall be provided to each board member. Could could would that solve it? Are you still asking who provides it? Is there, is there somebody that's designated to do that? David Melhoff has been designated. Yeah, David, David has. So if you say utility staff? Yeah. I mean, because what if it's not David someday, right? Either David or David's department says he's got a uh, another person working with him. Either one of them can. In any in in any emergency, Chris can too. So let's just say staff. I would be better. Right. Let's say staff. Right. Okay. And then if that ever changes, we're yep. covered. Okay. So a written notice of such meeting shall be prepared by staff, given to the general manager and each board member. Yeah. And you just it mentioned the electronic you know, something other than just that. Mm-hmm. Do you think it has to say electronic or can we just scratch left at his residence? Could say shall be given to each notice shall be given to each board member and just leave it. Yeah. Scratch, I think that's fine. Scratch the at your residence thing. Sure. Period. At least 24 hours before such a meeting. Keeping that in or? I think we should. Yes. Keeping it in, okay. I mean, the only time would be is in case of a dire emergency if there needed to be an update or. It, okay. Um, but would we need that to even be in here? Yes. Yes. If you've got, if you're requiring 24 hours notice. I guess such notice is not practicable under the circumstance, given the circumstances. I mean, that would be rarely used, but. Right. So it's going to read at least 24 hours before such meeting, unless. Dire circumstances no, you know, or whatever. It's not practical. Such notice. Unless such notice is not practicable under the circumstances. And I hate that word, but it is the proper word to use. Rob, you're recording, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can also send you, um, I, I'm going to take notes as well, and I can send you later just to, so you two don't have to. It'd be good just to have the minutes to confirm. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure. Your next section, sir. My next one. Mm -hmm. is, we always had an issue, or not necessarily an issue, but in the definition of board and board of public utilities, and we it, is the board. Does the board of public utilities equal? Do we need to say, do we need to? I, what I have been doing, and you may want to do something different, I have started to put elected board or elected board members when it refers to you, you, and when it refers to the overall board of public utilities, I refer to it as such. But I, when I talk about the actual members, I say I've been using elected board or elected members. Did that come up in the discussion? Of the charter ordinance, mm -hmm. yes, I and mean, it is. You know, I it's very confusing and it's not consistent, and I can't defend it. <laughs> so, 
So we just need to make it consistent. Yes. So it, it, it's however you, the board, the elected board wants it done. It will just carry it out with that schematic, however. But that's how I've been starting to write the ordinances is using elected board or elected board members. Yeah, I think just make it the same if you're doing the charter and this, just have it all. I agree. You okay with that, Tom? Mm -hmm. I have something for mm -hmm. <laughs> it to 1.3. Mm -hmm. The second paragraph poses a dilemma because it, it should be confidential. And it said, but then it says that, that you can't disclose the content session except as authorized by a vote of four board members. Well, that would have to be done and a vote would have to be done in public in which case you would have disclosed it because you would say, I'm giving you permission to, so um, except as authorized by, you could say consent, maybe perhaps consensus of four board members. I think that's fine as long as it technically doesn't qualify as a vote. Hmm. Back up to 1.1. One one. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Forget it. Oh. Hmm. 2.2. Two dot, two dot two. I'm confused about when it's uh, we're talking about when it appears that a quorum will not be present for an upcoming board meeting. Board may reschedule such meeting by an informative vote of four board members. But if we don't have a quorum, how do we have four board members there to? I don't know, unless there's, unless it's the board saying like APPA, okay, we're going to, you know, three of us are going to be gone. It, it would require advance notice, not, not. Is this ever even? I'm not saying it has never happened. It's we've never, never followed that. Well, I've never ever been at a meeting that we didn't have a quorum that I can recall. Have you, Tom? And I suppose, I mean, you do have to prepare for it, but I don't know how he makes a good point. Yes, a very good point. Right. So so if you know, if you followed it to the letter of the law, then you would have to wait till your next regularly scheduled meeting. So we wouldn't have so we don't have a quorum. There's no meeting, right. but we so that but and it talks about rescheduling. So that would we just need to so, say there's no meeting. So I can't if the, if the meeting is canceled, I can't send an email to the board the next day to say there's no quorum. Give me some dates so we can reschedule. So the law says you can do that, okay. and then but then it would come. You would have to go back to the. It would then you'd have to reschedule it as a special meeting. Because based on this Sorry, section, okay, you'd have to reschedule it as a special meeting because you could do that with written, the general manager has the authority to provide the written notice for a special meeting. So you could do that without a vote. This requires a vote, which would have to happen as Tom pointed out in public. And when there's four members. When there's four members. Yeah. Right, <laughs> exactly. So it would only be for advance notice. It wouldn't be rescheduling. So that's what that and this would would take this would be because the next the meeting is we don't have a quorum, there's no meeting, and then the next the next regularly scheduled meeting is you know two weeks. Right. So this would be to schedule a meeting between a special meeting. You're saying a special meeting. To make up for when we didn't have a quorum. Right. So it would be it would be rescheduling. After the, this is for rescheduling ahead of the fact. This, the special meeting is for whenever. 
but but I see that I mean that's problematic if you want to reschedule that meeting like that night happens. So let me ask this. So we're going to reschedule. We can only reschedule and call it a special meeting based on this document or based on the Kansas statute. You have to follow both. Okay. Well, so so, so if you want to, this could be changed. So, absolutely. So, yeah, that's what we're. Yeah. I know that's what I'm trying to get. Right. To, so. so you can reschedule it and call it a special meeting without getting a vote of four. Right. And then don't you just follow whatever is in one dot two? Right. Okay. Or you can re the way it's written, and you guys can change this. Or the way it's written, you can re as Tom pointed out, you can schedule it ahead of time. Like if we know at the next meeting there's an APPA okay. conference, then you could reschedule it, call it the regular meeting, using the vote. Yeah. <laughs> but if you just reschedule it, um, the board may reschedule such meeting um, as a capital S, capital M special meeting according to the procedures outlined in section 1.2. You can also, you could add that or the board may, yes, she could put that in there too. And that would give you that flexibility. Okay. Because that's, that's the way we would have to do it because we don't have a quorum. Right. Right. You can't do it right then and there. Uh, and I've got something on one dot or two dot one, and we are okay. with that. Um, a member may be present by telephone. I mean, clearly we have other means now. So can we say by telephone or by other interactive means using compatible technology? Or electronically? Can you say electronically and use one word or no? A lawyer, Mary. Since this is not, I just got rid of all those other words down there. <laughs> yeah, what she said. I gave away to them to give up here. Say it again, please. Uh, a member may be present by telephone or by other interactive. How about how about this? Um, or by or by other interactive. Uh, it's a telephone or web presence technology. Got telephone already. Right. Or right. other web presence or or web chat, but web presence. Did you just say web based web based web -based technology? Then, well, what's it gonna be if it's not web based? Is it like mine at that point? <laughs> AI substitute will sit in. And then this is just a thing for the board to think about. The it, I don't believe it's in here, but the board has said that no participation by those technology methods for um session. Yes, for an executive session. So no, it's not in here, but so and that to me is a bigger question on um attendance itself, right? So I believe that board attendance, I didn't find it anywhere in this policy unless I missed it. Is that in the charter ordinance? I don't think there's I thought, a- I thought it was something here. Maybe, I'm gonna... Maybe I missed it. I don't uh, think- is this, is this a policy or is this a procedure? This is board. Board, board rules of procedure. Right. So it's not a- Policies necessarily, or what's what's is there? I don't have a good difference for you on those. It's it's how the board governs itself, so the board can also change it. You know, the board can opt to change if it is set in there. Um, the board, as for because the board members are all elected for attendance, there's not much you can do because you don't have the authority to remove each other. You can, you can, um, How many, censor. If I, if I miss six meetings in a year, this board cannot remove me, but the rest of the board cannot remove me. No, Is that right. That's right. Now I will check the charter and I will check for other, because there are some unified government. I will do. There is that something number. in the charter. There's something in the unified government about board 
about boards and attendance. Mm -hmm. So it will have to be in there because you can't do that to another member. But so I will check on that. Okay. For homework. But what we can do, I think, is how we attend these meetings. We we could govern that, could we not? Yes, I believe so, because you've allowed for, I mean, you've given the privilege of not attending in person, so you could take that privilege away. Right. And I don't think we've really given it. It's just been well, and I think understood. I mean, we're revisiting the policies now. And so you've got a new knee surgery coming up, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> that the medical, you know, that his medical situation necessitates he needs to participate remotely. That right. Again, understood. Good. Completely understood. Um, you know, one of us, God forbid, you know, could something worse could happen to us, right? And we may have to participate remotely all the time, but that's a medical, you know, situation that necessitates it. So I think, you know, you could account for that, right? And I don't ever want to take that away from anyone because as Angela said, I mean, we are elected board members. But, you know, sort of the um, picking and choosing, right? When we're attending remotely and not, I mean, if there's not, I mean, do we think that we might want to, and obviously discuss it with the rest of the board, but um, suggest that we put some parameters around non-emergent, non-emergency based remote attendance of board members, in addition to obviously, you know, excluding. I really. We need to look and see what's in the charter. Yeah, because this is, um, you know, in a previous time and a former former member had a long illness and it. Right. It was, it was, we just, we didn't know what to do. We were really functioning as five board members mm -hmm. and it was, um, it was difficult. And, you know, you, you know, the person's ill, right? You, there's just, you know, some and I don't know letters might help in the future, you know, future going forward. Well, in particular, because you guys have experienced that in the past wow. with Terry. And so. Okay, so I just. So a vacancy occurs when a duly elected or appointed member dies, resigns, is determined to be incompetent or incapable of performing the duties of a board member by a court of law, or is absent from six consecutive scheduled board meetings. I think we use that actually on the issue that we were talking to about previously because you might remember Tom if my memory is serving me right then then we did have a phone hookup every when it was getting close to six meetings missed the the electronic web-based or telephone acts as being present at the meeting so that would not you know correct that's correct Mm -hmm. they're, they're answering the roll call mm -hmm. so they're present yeah and so that's why i mean again if it's a situation where you know somebody has a terminal illness tom's going to be out because he's got a knee replacement you know whatever um you know, and it can't be helped you know that's different to me than than a choice right and yeah, if I'm going to miss meetings because I'm going to spend the summer in Spain, that's, no. But if you're in Spain and you tell a tell, uh, funny, so you, That's why I was. Yeah, because it's not the way that it is. Yeah. So, but so, so, so like we'd be short-sighted if we said, okay. you know, because that doesn't count as a miss, right? We've all agreed that that doesn't count as a miss. And so, you know, if, if I was going to, you know, summer in Italy, you know, and asked in advance, should, should we not limit that to, okay, Rose can participate twice while she's in Italy. She's going to be there four months or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right answer. The other thing is, which is not really any part of this, but the board will say, the, I'm not sure I've heard you say it, but I've heard it, you know, uh, board member, uh, John Doe has an excused absence. Well, that's not, there's really no, that's not, 
There's yeah, no, that's not that anything. Uh, that just started all of a sudden. It started all of a sudden. They yeah. have to that there's no mechanism for excused ass because the charter ordinance is pretty clear. So it's just six misses, and that's really yeah, you're, you're, excuse. I don't know where that came. But from. it's consecutive misses. Consecutive, yes, correct. Are you on that charter? Uh, are you to participate in that charter situation too? The charter review, yes. Mm -hmm. But but this are they looking at any of ours there? No, because what they're looking at is not all charter. This is not part of the UG charter. This is a charter ordinance. And so far, the committee is only looking at the UG charter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to revise a charter ordinance, what's required? It takes a super majority. And then it has to be published twice. And then there's four, it's different. I'm getting it messed up because it's different between a city and a county. But then it's like a 60 day waiting protest period after the uh, two times of publication. And then if there's no protest, no valid protest, then it takes it in place. So like if we ask to change the part of this chart ordinance that applies to us, we would have to maybe have a sponsor, a commissioner sponsor? Yes, you would probably send it to the, you know, to, to a sponsor or to the administration or someone as a board, you know, we're requesting the following changes in the mm -hmm. charter ordinance. Okay. 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 Right. <clears throat> um, So for the six misses, they're just misses. Nothing counts as excused. Uh, Again, these were this was written, and the six misses, and there all that was written before we went through a pandemic, and we had Zoom meetings, and we had telephone hookups, and all that. So. But I think this is my personal opinion. I mean, and technology is great, and I think you should use it, Tom, when you have your knee surgery. But I don't think that I should just call in every other Wednesday because it's convenient, and I want to stay in my PJs all day. I just feel like there. And I agree. That I also, for the most part, we need to be present in person. But I that you know, and can we? Can we? legislate that i mean can we put that down in writing and is this if somebody is elected to this board they're elected and they say i'm never going to attend a meeting up in person i'm going to do it remotely remotely can i mean we've accepted the fact that you can attend a meeting remotely can we say okay you can attend you two-thirds of the two-thirds you have to you have to attend in person two-thirds can you do, can we, can we as a board have a proceed, you know, do that? Or it's well, not absent, like absent a medical, you know, or other emergent reason, right? There could be lots of things. It doesn't have to be just medical. Um, why couldn't we? Then what is your recourse? So if that counts as an absence. Um, so you're not, they're not participating in for six consecutive meetings, you're not allowing them to call in. Um, what do you think about that one? You when, know, I, when I chose always in the past assumed that phone participation, you know, pre-pandemic thinking was that that was sort of a privilege to, to not appear in person. It was a privilege. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know. Would the courts look a little differently on it now, post pandemic? With that, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I know that I one time I was at a, a conference, an educational conference in Pittsburgh, <laughs> Kansas, and that was the first time I ever like called in to the meeting, and um, that was an extraordinary experience for me. I mean, I tried to plan my when I ran for this office. I tried to plan my life around, but at that time I, I still had a career. So that that's hard when you have a career and, you know, but I tried to plan everything around being able to fulfill this office to, you know, like be here. Well, and, the, and so that's the thing is, 
you know, I don't know also that the courts have, um, you know, had anything before them I agree. Right, to determine what does it mean to fulfill the obligation? Be to the because they were more concerned with the hybrid meetings of still giving the public the ability to attend on site. And that even, and that has been the focus of the court's concern, not the ability to, uh, to attend remotely. Well, and I think, is it possible that, uh, and maybe it, I don't want to say it's unique to this board, or this community, but do other communities not have to deal with this because their their elected officials show up? I mean, I can. Oh. I, next week, I will be attending um, a city attorney's meeting, and so that's certainly something I will ask. Or, you know, during the break, so does any community have, <clears throat> or what what are their rules? And so that might be a good place to start. Again, we're elected. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing, you know, and we could vote five to one to kick, you can vote five to one to kick me off the board. But I don't think we can. I, that's what I'm saying. But you, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have any, you don't have any teeth in it and there's nothing really that you can do. So, right. The only way is with the six consecutive miss, oh, those list, the list that I read, um, you know, if a court of competent jurisdiction found someone incompetent or there were six consecutive misses, then the board can go about filling that position. But it would, the question is, are those misses, if they miss six time, now, six that, times? Now, is that that's talking about elected board members or is that talking about? BPU only. Board members. That, that phrase, that what I read, and I will send it, I'll send that section to the board. Um, I'll email that to you. That was specifically to the BPU board not all the other boards and commissions and subgroups. So did that speak part, specifically? Part it's part of, it is a charter ordinance. I want to be careful because that's like the board. Right, okay. Um, this is confusing. It's the, you know, there's, there's the charter. It is, but yes, it is a charter ordinance that creates the BPU. So, but, but my guess is, I'm sorry, my guess is there are rural communities that do not allow, you know, that there are some communities that only allow for in-person attendance. But when you're allowing the pub, the, the issue for the court would be when you're allowing the public and you're allowing speakers, what they would do. And I don't know the answer to that. Okay. So do we want to just on this issue, we allow remote attendance? But we're going to limit it. We're going to, we're thinking about it. can you know that's where you can run into it. If I attend, if it's six consecutive misses, but if I remotely attend, that's in a that is a counts as a as being here. So then I need six more consecutive misses, and if sometime during that six times I attended remotely, correct. And that's kind of what happened at the incident I was talking about earlier, when this, when somebody started checking about the number of meetings you could miss. Then, but I guess what I'm trying to say is we have to carve out like an exemption to that, right? To account for a situation exactly. like that, that that person in that situation could attend remotely because they have, I'll call it good cause, right? I don't want to limit it to a medical situation, but although I'm not sure I'm ever going to stick with the words good cause, but that doesn't sound good to me right now, but um, no, because that'll be right. anything. Right. But I mean, so, 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 have, so, so that person who's, a, who's affected by, in this case, the medical situation, that person's never affected by it because they're always able to attend. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're never going to have an absence. Can, can I, may I throw one more <laughs> thorn into this? Sure. Is as the board's determining, and I don't like good cause either, but as they're determining whether they have cause to attend remotely, you may be asked to review medical information, which then how do you do that? Be, you know, how is that reviewed? And then you vote on it and make the decision. And so you, you might have some confidential information that then you're voting on. Is it good enough for the board if, I mean, obviously, 
you know, the human resource department has access to people's medical information. They just do. And if they determine. I would not want to make the, the, an employee responsible for ruling on the sure. condition of a board member. Okay. Where the HIPAA rules apply. Right. That's still going to be. Right. Yeah. And the, 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 this should be under one dash one or one dash two. What what it doesn't necessarily fall under two dash two where we're talking about rescheduling due to the lack of quorum. No, I think Rose yeah, more of attendance. Yeah, right? Rose so went back know, to that. I so think. back to the regular meetings, back to special meetings, and you know, the attendance. Maybe we just have to have that discussion with the wider board. But it sounds like Angela, you may also want to. Do a little bit more research just on whether or not you should go down that path. How about that? Can I just ask one? And can we also, at the same time, I know that this come up by one board member being excluded from an executive session remotely. Do we want to, you know, we never, that's not anywhere in the procedures. And the unified government does have that as an ordinance, I believe. That they are that they do not allow members to participate remotely for executive sessions. I I really feel like that's totally necessary. But do we have to put it in right? Do we have to have it? I think it'd be best if you if you did. Yeah. I have no problem with you know that you have to be in person at an executive session, but I think that it's going to come up again and again and again and. Then, if we don't put it in. Oh, do you think it's okay to be remotely online? Not for an executive session. No, that, oh, I thought, you, okay, no. that's no. that's how I feel. And then I would say that if we had something like the pandemic that came on quick and you had to have an executive session, the board could remotely agree to- We could suspend, suspend, these, the, suspend these- Right. Rules. Right. And then and, and deal with that on an as basis. I don't think you need to write that in because you'd have that authority anyway. Yeah, because we did do it, I think, two times. So who's gonna come up with the language for the executive session? I can, I mean, it's it's up to how you like drafting. I don't mind doing it, it's up to the board. Congratulations. Okay. I think it definitely has to be in there. I'm, so, Tom, I, a simple way of looking at attendance, if you don't answer the roll call or or vote to either at the beginning or at the end, then you're considered absent. Okay. And even through, through all of the other means that the board is establishing through, through all the interactive web-based technology and telephone, if you don't take roll call at the beginning or at the end of the meeting, then you're considered absent. That's pretty cut and dry. But that's not, I wasn't going to get into. No, 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 the, no, no, yeah. no, no, I'm just, just yeah. Uh, then you get into if you're electronically connected right. on about it's not my fault, I couldn't get dialed in, blah, blah, blame Rob, whatever. <laughs> right. So are we ready to move on? Are we? So we're at rule three, reciting offices. I think we're going to need to make that change from. First meeting in May each year, president, vice president elected to, I think we, yes. the last two times, it's been the second meeting in January. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. So is everybody good with that change? Mm -hmm. It needs to be changed again at the very end. Yeah. And then I think I, I would like to add like a circuit meeting in January or next scheduled meeting after, you know, if you have, if it, I think we had one time where it snowed that day and it got delayed. So I think I, I'd like to add a few words about that. If that meeting's not held then the next. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. On this appointed the secretary, we always vote like, so we're electing the secretary instead of appointing. Does so that, that need to be changed? The charter ordinance, for whatever reason, that is language straight from the charter. Okay. You, it's elected and then appointed. Okay. And you could say, you could put and shall appoint 
by voting, you know, you could specify how the appointment yeah. takes place, but I didn't realize that for a long time. It's but. it is an odd. Sentences change then. Your Honor also says President, Vice President, too, right? Yes. Uh, chair, Vice Chair. Let me check. You got me doubting Can myself. I use those two terms interchangeable. So, uh, anybody, uh, 3.2, any uh, definition? If the president and vice president are both absent, the temporary presiding officers elected pursuant to this section, what, what part of this section is it pursuant to? 3.2. Or well, it mentions it in 3.3 .3 as well. I mean, you could make it the secretary, and then if the secretary is also not present, then you really don't have a quorum right. at that point. Yeah. It's really rule three. I've never, oh, never, ever been at a meeting where this has happened. So... So instead of saying section, are you okay with saying rule three? Since that's the rule. That's the rule. Or under? Yeah. Not technically a section. Mm -hmm. You're changing section to rule. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Rule three. But then. I'm being dense, then how do you, what is the part about to the temporary presiding officer elected pursuant to? Should it be elected by a quorum of the board instead? Then those present, because you're not, not, they're not if, if the president and vice president are both gone. And then you're gonna have to have four people. It's, I don't know, that's why I would, wondered if you just wanted to do secretary and then if, Secretary's not present. He certainly won't have a quorum. That's okay. With I'm by me. I'm fine with that. Are you putting secretary in or? Yeah, instead of electing somebody for them. So then we just, we're going to scratch the, the, it's also absent. Then the secretary and scratch the temporary presiding officer elected pursuant to this section. And then in the, the in 3.3, .3, the third paragraph where it says the uh, president's not there, the vice president's not there. The, uh, it says that the general manager shall call the, the board to order. If we just put in that the that secretary that? is the third person. We it's the presiding to... officer. Do you have to leave that in there? You relinquish if the president shows up? Does that need to stay in there? So uh, upon arrival of the president or the vice president, then the secretary shall relinquish the chair. Is that necessary? <laughs> I guess if you yeah. have a secretary that doesn't want to give up, I don't know. Or you're in the middle of a you're in the middle of a discussion or oh, motion yeah. and things. So. Yeah. so I can take a stab at rewriting this so that it's president, vice president, secretary, and then with all the authority of the pres the pre presiding officer, and then leave in that section so you know how that transition occurs. Because that, I will say that that issue has come up at the Unified Government when they've appointed someone 
to fill a to sit in at a standing committee, and then the right the member that's normally in their conflict flares and they show up, and then there's been an awkward who stays and who goes. So. Hmm. Rule four is committees. To be rewritten. We list a, a bunch of committees there that we don't, we don't have. <laughs> and then if we, you know, sometimes those committees are kind of fluid. You have a committee and then you know, like audits not listed there. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know as president, I've probably changed committees or just dropped one that I felt like we weren't really. Did we just say committees deemed necessary by the president? Exactly what I was going to, or yeah. by an affirmative vote. That's exactly, yeah. I just struck. Just the scratch the rest of those. Because you probably changed that this year too, to make it. That would, or by an affirmative vote. Yeah, I agree. Look, okay, okay, then the final paragraph there, board members shall have the opportunity to be involved in meetings with large industrial and commercial customers. What is that doing? What's that sentence doing under committees? Is that where it should be, needs to be? What? what? Um, I think that that just maybe allows us to be if Bill does a luncheon of all the. But is that what is that word? Why is that under com, under the rule no for committees? I have no idea. Is there someplace else that it would better fit? I'm not sure it needs to be a procedure because this is how the board governs itself. That is like you say the luncheon or the, uh, the meeting really doesn't occur during a board meeting or. I, I don't, the only time I could ever think about that being involved would be if you had them for a luncheon and somebody's yeah. like speaking, but. Normally have a key account luncheon. Yeah. Once a year and the board's always invited to that. Yeah. But I don't think it even needs to be in. Can we just scratch it totally? Do you feel like it should be there? Don't know why it was put here. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why if a long time ago. Well, I have no history with it. I, that no, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't recall. Was there a point in time where board members thought that they should? Is there a reason that it has to be in, in writing? Or does, I don't, somebody that precluded the board from being at these? I don't know that history. I don't know if before there was once, you know. Whether they once they said no, board members can't attend, cannot attend these uh, things. So somebody wrote it in and just stuck it there, or what? Or someone just wrote it. I mean, it could have just come from. It could have been imported from another policy from another board where it was, you know, just. I can't remember any history about half worked into this. The only thing I would say is if it's going to stay in here is that, I mean, there should be like the board members should be afforded notice of this in some way, like, and it can't be like two hour notice, <laughs> but if it's not going to stay in, it doesn't matter, but I mean, that's just totally the case anyway. So. So in or out, it's up to you guys. Well, I just have a question, I guess. So if the guy that's usually an intervener when we have the right hearing. Right. So if he just called me, is his name right? right. And so I, I wouldn't be comfortable going to talk to him. Basically. Right. right. And I'm not sure why that's in there because it seems to be against the procedure, which is that you get the information in the hearing. Right. So I, it seems like that would be ex parte. It potentially. seem like that would be ex parte. I just feel like that maybe there was an issue somehow down the line and then I think you're taking it out. I'm gonna be taking it out. 
I'm here with taking it out. I mean, obviously, that will be the committee's recommendation to the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, duties of the presiding officer. Okay, can I just ask something about point of order? I just asked because I don't know. Sure. All right, so we're having a discussion and somebody calls for point of order. Is it up to the chair? Yes. Yes. To, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yep. all right. And I mean, we can follow these things to the letter if you want. There's only... Okay, it's, I've been a little perplexed when that comes up as to if I'm the presiding officer, what my role is exactly, but okay. Uh, end of 5.2. Uh, Board member shall notify the board president. Can it be and the general manager instead of or? Yes, I would agree. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's that tough to yeah. add one other line on the text or whatever. <laughs> Um, the second paragraph in 6.1, I think. Um, it's, uh, we've got, we're, we're, we're real okay with I was, employees. And I, was, I, was, I was. I didn't have anything there. Sorry. I don't know if you can okay. see what 7.2 says again. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty generic and pretty. Well, when it gets to seven two, I have something that refers back to for you. Do. So now we're now point one second paragraph. Yeah, I mean, and if anybody you know has been listening to me for three and a half years, um, you will know that I continually ask for as much advance information as possible. So that's good that it's here, um, you know. And I know we're saying whenever possible. Um, it's a, any way we can craft that any better. I mean, you know, to the extent anything can be provided on the Friday before, that would be super awesome. If, if it's not practical, I guess, it, you know, it's not practical, but. How about as much as possible? Or, I mean, there's some. It says whenever possible. So. Okay, so I mean, there's some things that really take at least up to Monday or sometimes Tuesday for them to finish. And, and I mean, in our staff meetings, I remind people the board wants information at least a week in advance or by Friday or as much as possible. We send it out with the agenda. It's not always finished and ready to go at that point. Well, then do we just say, okay, if it's not, we don't have it, then are you saying, or would you like to just say, okay, then that didn't go on that agenda. We didn't get the information. So we, it goes on the put it on the next. Well, if it's a slide presentation, 
Is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah. So at which a vote will be requested? I mean, that that's a different deal, right? I mean, right. that stuff should be provided. Right. Yeah. If we're um, going to vote on something, but if somebody's just presenting, you know, like uh, the transportation person did, if his slide deck's not ready on, you know, that time frame, I mean, it's working and doing. Same. So, Same. yeah. You know, and I mean, I just. I feel generally, um, you know, if the closer we get them to the meeting, I feel generally unprepared to have sort of um, absorb the information to be able to ask intelligent questions sometimes. So um, that's, you know, you know, my my chance to read it may be Saturday and Sunday too. So, I mean, I know that's not everybody's. Yeah. Issue, but it does say in here if the if the information. If such information is available but not provided to the board members reasonably in advance of the board meeting, then no votes shall be permissible. Yeah, no, and and we certainly have done that, right? We've seen that at least once um, with a, you know one of the resolutions, and and understandable, and so we just pushed it, you know, by one, I think, because we didn't have time to, you know, really review it. Yeah, I think in just thinking back in the past, that's happened, not frequently, but it it happens if we haven't. Yeah, if we're not prepared to vote. Yep. Okay. I, it, um, it's stated perfectly. Is it good? It's good. It's good. Okay. Be good the way it is. Yep. Okay. Sure am. Okay. Next 6.2 is the order of business. At a regular meeting, from a vote of the board shall proceed, call order, approval of agenda, visitors, agenda items, and adjourn. Uh, there was somewhere in something, well, I don't know whether it was here or somewhere else, it gave a 15-minute period mm -hmm. of time for visitors at the beginning of the meeting and then at the end of the meeting. So I know what we want to do that. 7.1, yeah. 7.2. Or in the... We, we've had where we where we've run into it the last few meetings when we've had people show up. They have we have the visitors. They make their comments at the beginning <laughs> of the meeting, and then as we go through the agenda, something comes up and they want they want to speak. Want to speak. Now, in the uh, Public Works and Safety Committee Standing Committee, the UG, the way they handle it is. They'll have the agenda item and then they'll ask anybody that's on the board. Do you have, you know, or on that? We have any questions. And then we can ask our questions. And then they say, is there anybody in the audience that has any questions? Is there anybody online that has any questions? So they allow public to have input, not just at the public comment section or their visitor section but also for each agenda item. But then they do not at the full commission meetings. Mm -hmm. I, I, so that, that is the, the comment, other than a public hearing, or I know that the mayor has had some special evenings where he's allowed public comment, um, but other than something that is a public hearing with notice provided, required by law, there's not the public comment at the full commission meetings. So they, but so they don't have they don't have a section in their on their full commission meeting where the visitors can get up at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. No, we do. Right. Do we want to allow the public to have input on agenda items, or do we want to just continue the way that it has, which is kind of a cluster? When they're trying to talk and we're saying no, you can't. You know. Yeah, that's been. Bad. I I mean, for somebody who's never attended our meeting or watched or whatever, they don't really realize that when they have a question, they can't just ask. So and, and it's it's if we only allow them to speak during the visitor section portion, they we they, they really don't know what the agenda items are are gonna bring forward that they may have a question on. So. Right. If I know that somebody's tried to speak up and I've tried, I tried to notice who that person is and I try to go to them when our meeting's adjourned 
and explain or ask what their question is and explain. I, you know, I hear it's a time limit too, which we don't adhere to. So, so do we have a, does anybody have a problem with allowing? or as they do at the public works and saying, I imagine the economic development, those other ones, asking if there if there's anybody that has anything they want, they want to add no. any questions or any input they have during. And then if we do that, then we would need to then limit it to you know, a very short period of time. Well, I just noticed that some people just want to speak up at the presentation when somebody's doing a presentation on water or whatever. They just want to. I mean, do we allow that? Do we just? That's what I'm. That's what I'm at. That's at the at the public works and safety. They'll press. I'll just say reserve till the safety. end. The board, the, the you know, the members of that committee, they ask any questions they want, and then they. It sure, then it's before they take a vote on if it's an item that needs to be voted on or just an information only item before they go forward then they say is there anybody in the audience that wants to be heard on this is there anybody on the you know uh, remotely that wants to be heard and they allow you know limited to that limited, issue limited to that issue they have input I know it would cause us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. But it lengthen, you know. It could or could not. I mean, if, everything. Because right now, you know, there's still, it would make for a smoother conducted meeting than you trying to shut somebody down that's one you know, wants to ask a question or do say. Uh, well, I don't mind if they, but I, I, I don't like people to just blurt out when somebody's at the microphone making a presentation and then somebody in the audience just blurts out, well, I don't understand why my hydrants, you know, I, that is worrisome to me because then I'm afraid that we're going to just kind of have lack of decorum at every meeting. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me personally. I don't I'm a teacher. I want everybody to raise their hand and wait to me. Well, I mean, it, 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 you, but you could, you know, you could tell that person, okay, you know, quiet. You'll have an opportunity to make, you know, to, you've got a question after, there's a certain, you've got a time that you. And is that just, is that only for the um, items that are voted on? That's why I'm, I'm just throwing it out there saying that, you know, we've had, we've had that issue at the last few board meetings where people want to talk about things outside of the visitor's comments portion. Can we, uh, are we willing to accommodate, accommodate those people to allow them to have, you know, input into whatever, whatever. And again, we would have to make, is it just on the items that we're going to vote on? Is it on the information? You know, Information items. I don't know what to say. Rose, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, I really have not been adhering to what, you know, what this policy says. Um, and so, you know, do I think it's a bad idea to have 15 minutes at the beginning, 15 minutes at the end? No, they, for the exact reason you guys are saying, I mean, I don't know every comment we've heard is necessarily related to an agenda item, right? I mean, that's it's possible that it's not. So I don't know if that makes sense in this case. It might, sometimes it might not. Um, but uh, I mean, I think. So then is that just one more thing to you, for you to police as president? Do you have to say, I'm sorry, that's, we're not talking about that, or you see what I'm saying? If they. Well, but that's the thing is, you know, I don't. Um... I'll say this in the committee meetings that I've been at, mm -hmm. no, there's never anybody that's, you know, had anything to say, and there's never been anybody on the telephone. And I bet that's not true at the zoning commission. 
<laughs> well, they, I don't know about whether they're dissolving, whether they... And those are a little bit different because those are public hearings. And so there is um, a statutory right to comment for and against every item. And so mm -hmm. those are controlled by state law, whereas these items, unless it's like a public hearing on a water loan, those are not. Right. Um, I, look, I mean, the, these are public meetings. Um, we are a municipally owned utility. Um, you know, if we have to stay in our customers minutes. own this too. <laughs> if we have to stay an extra 15 minutes. And, and if, you know, if I didn't want to, if I, as a board member, didn't want to stay an extra 15 minutes to let somebody from the public who has taken their time to come down to 540 Minnesota Avenue speak, uh, then I should not be on this board. I mean, that's the way I, I guess I look at it. So um, so the question is, do, do we want to allow them visitors where they can come in and then they can talk about it at the beginning, the visitors, visitors, comments, talk about anything they want to. And then do we want to then allow them to speak on specific or individual agenda items as they come up or hold those comments and questions until the end and give them 15 minutes at the, have a 15 minute period at the end. I think it would be more orderly if you reserved comments until the end. I mean, if you're going to give an agenda, I agree. Um, I agree. You know, section. But I also am not sure that I want to you know, restrict a comment to an agenda item because, you know, an agenda item could be look at the vegetation management we've done, right? And that's great. And we all understand the importance of it to the utility, but that may not be why that person who couldn't show up till 630, right? That may not be what they want to talk about. And so, right. I mean, I, I don't know. I just, or, uh, yeah, or they could you know, you know have a fifteen minute and fifteen minutes at the end, and then they could talk about an agenda item that you know they something came, that they had a question about sure. an agenda item that they heard or something but I, something different. You know that's that's three people speaking, right? And that's not going to fly, I don't think. Well, I mean. <clears throat> We've had a lot of meetings um, since I've been on the board where nobody speaks, like ever. <laughs> and, you know, we have one outside visitor that consistently attends the meetings um, and does not speak. And so, you know, I mean, I suppose that that comes with the territory. I know, but I'm saying, are you going to limit them to three speakers? I'm not. If they have five minutes, I, I'm not. And you have 20 people signed up. I personally am not. And I understand that we need to extend by affirmative vote of the board. <clears throat> so now I guess I need because to. Because we've never else. adhered to this 15 minute thing. That's right. So. Well, but some nights you get zero minutes. So if you, right. if you go all your, all your times where you had no speakers and you like add all those 15 minutes up. You know, it's like rollover minutes, right? The public has rollover minutes into the next board. Meeting. But if it's going to be a, if, it, if it's going to, if we're not, if we don't do it like the UG and there being say, okay, is anybody here to have any comment? They want to make any comment on this agenda. You might need it. If we roll it to the end and open it up or whatever. Comments on the agenda, basically. No, so just comments. We've already said that we, you know, maybe they come in, they just, Comments, whatever they want to talk about, then but do, we they have to sign up? do they have to sign up again? And does that when do they when do they sign up to get on the list? To well, does, so their... so you're saying so like if it's a if it's a member of the public that spoke already in the first section and now they want to speak in the second section? That's how it's been. I mean, that's what's happened in my opinion. Somebody's got up and spoke about something and then they have a question when the meeting's going on and they just blurt out the question or raise their hand or you know um, many times it seems like it's the same person or not the same person a same person that might have had an issue or talked at the beginning mm -hmm. 
Well, why don't, why don't we table this one and think about this? Because I don't know that we have a recommendation. You know, this committee has a recommendation for the board yet. Um, no, and it, it is a dilemma. And I think as, it is as um, we approach, you know, all the things that will be going on in June and there will be a lot more comments, I think, and a lot more attendance. And so, so this, this uh, order of business only pertains to the regular session. Do you want a work session included or is it just, or not? It's up to you. Call to order, approval of the agendas, approval of the minutes. That's not done in the rec work session. Visitors are not in the work sessions. I don't know if you want a, a two section, one for a work, 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 work session section, regular session section, or just leave it as is. If we've never had one, do we have to add one? No, you it's can just more stuff. Yep, just it's just missing. So. I'm fine to add it. I mean, it's just it'll be everything except. Okay. So if I can add one. I know that's more words, Mary. Sorry. Add one other thought. To, cut any pages out. I'm um, just saying. Well, you go to your public works, and I'm, certainly I don't want to weigh too much in on this. This is up to you guys and, and the other board members. But when you go to the public works, that's more like our work section, work sessions, where, where if you want to invite the public to comment, that may be a time to consider. If we redo some of the work session things, especially if the board's going to vote on something, give the quick time to comment, maybe there. As a as a as an alternative, so it's up to you guys on how you want to do it. I'm trying to mimic the UG, that's kind of how the UG works. So yeah, I'm I'm not trying to mimic the UG because I think they're a bit very much But well, but I mean, I do. But is the way they do things in a long time, you, I don't know. Maybe they have. They've they've done some rearranging. They've initially had like six committees and they're down to four or they combined committees um so they did how many non-committee task force are out there oh no i can't answer that <laughs> <laughs> i've lost but i do i do believe in public we they need if they have the if they show up or they take the time they ought to be you know we we ought to give them the time to to comment briefly I agree. But I'm all for that. I just feel like there has to be some sort of organization. I I don't want somebody just jumping up and asking a question in the middle of one of our staff doing a presentation. That that is that would that, not be that that would be inappropriate. Well that's so, happened. But we don't have we don't have is that the exception or is that the rule though? I mean we don't have it in place. We don't have anything in place for them. They feel like maybe they have to jump up then and say something because they don't have that opportunity at the end of the presentation to ask, ask the, question. the question. Okay, but so how do we let the public know? Once we decide on what this is going to be, I think that we maybe have to take an excerpt of some sort and, you know, put it out there where the board meetings are. And, you know, I mean. Or you just, you just say, excuse me, you know, you, you'll, you know, you know You'll, at the end of the presentation, we'll ask uh, for uh, input from them. If it changes, we'll just add another line item on the agenda. So. And traditionally, although it's changed that the UG, traditionally, they weren't allowed to question staff. They had to address the board um, and the chair. And then if, if, they, if, if staff was then directed mm -hmm. to answer, so it wasn't really a free-for-all of, you know, I'm thinking... I think we, I'm yeah. thinking but we've had we have that in the opening statement, but there have been a couple. And I've tried to rein that in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I've tried. I think you've done a good job, Rose. I think it's less and less and less, I feel. But I do think we get some of the same people that are coming and they've kind of figured out our method of how we're dealing, mm -hmm. you know. It's I know that this random person asking a question that has slowed down, in my opinion. So one question I asked a while back, uh, 
roles, this is before you got on the board, was if, if a customer brings a problem to BPU, to the board, and I'm thinking about the lady that had to hire somebody to cut her tree down, and then she kept saying, she kept bringing it back, she came back about 12 times or so. So it's not BPU's responsibility. She met with staff. She met with the board on, on, num on numerous occasions saying, you know, can you reimburse me? Well, it's, it's not our responsibility to begin with. So the question I asked was, how many times do we allow the public to bring the same topic, the same questions, the same complaints back? Is there a time limit to that or do, does that just go on forever? Especially if the board knows that we've, we've already resolved everything we possibly could. Yeah, I think there's another incident about like a lightning strike and right. a person wants reimbursement. I, right. yeah. I know that's been a more than one time coming yeah. to the board. But that's really not our decision. I mean, I mean, it's not our decision whether or not, you know, that's a policy outside of board that's right. policy about the tree and whatever. So right. we but I mean if if I if I come back to say, here's my problem, staff is spending up time, the board's spending up time to say, there's nothing we can really do here, but you're gonna come back eight or nine more times with the same thing. I guess we just put up with it. Okay. Okay. And and that is one difference. I know you're not trying to model after the UG, but since they don't have that open mic, so to speak, if if someone wants to speak, they have to write a letter requesting to be on an agenda, and it is rarely granted because it's not really the business. It's not conducting the business of the unified government. Mm -hmm. It's they try and keep them more business. So if you're coming in, this is our business for the evening, and you can speak on that. Um, they have had the mayors have all done something different with ways to interact with the public. And currently this mayor has time set aside for those just generalized public comments. But for the most part, those are not allowed during these meetings. And we do have a registration uh, link on our website. So if wants to speak at a board meeting, they can pre-register. Don't really follow that. We still have our sign-in sheet people to use so we're, we've got both covered yeah and i know that you know this says 15 minutes but i've seen people come in right. later and we've always let them speak i can't ever recall in all the years i've been on this board that if they came in at 6 20 they got to speak at some point i know we've gone over time and i know you have somewhere you need to be I can, Station 430. Okay. Can we maybe uh, table this one for just a moment? And maybe I think these two, the two policies that we have are probably going to be pretty probably addressed pretty quickly. Where do we stop at on this time? I think at uh, 7.2, that can proceed. That's where we start the next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And whether that be. Okay. We can all think about it. So you want to do travel? The, yeah, the, the, the travel and the per diem. Yeah. I think those are probably pretty right. Yeah, pretty. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You brought the brought this up for yeah. I was asked. I was asked to bring all all policies directly impacting the board of directors. So. Have we had a, a has there been any issues with these two policies that, that I'm aware of? Haven't heard of any. Uh looked through them. I'm not aware. I can circle back and see. I think it's pretty cut and dry. I think there was an issue. I it might even have been before you came, Tom, of people wanting to view them while they were in town. Right. You take somebody to watch or something. Right. That really. And if you look, look, these no. were these were reviewed and updated just two years ago. Right. So if you want to spend time going through them again, we can certainly do that. Okay, so let's start with the the uh, five hundred oh oh two, which is a per diem allowance. I does anybody have any any issue with it or? 
good with good with it, good with the hundred dollars per per day. I'm I'm okay with it. No issue with it. Now I guess my question is this is this for over for DM? Is it for overnight travel? Overnight travel? Uh yeah. And yes. Basically, overnight travel. Does it? I mean, does it doesn't it, say overnight. So if because I know, like to there, Topeka for the Topeka. day. I think you might be able to draw per diem. I'm not really sure. I don't think we ever had. I don't think anybody ever has. That was that would be my question. What? <laughs> yeah. I, probably. I'll, way I'll, back. I'll get with Lori, but I know there's a certain time you have to travel and be away before this. Should it be spelled out here? If you want to, we can. Probably. Well, here it says that I, I, I think like Mary's saying, like, I know in-state travel, if we go to Wichita and down to the KMU or whatever, right. you get the, the per diem. If you go to Topeka and attend the legislature or legislative, you know, whatever it is. I thought about, I was thinking of when the, the water thing used to be, right. sometimes it's in Topeka. Okay. Why don't I update this and send it back to you what how we're treating staff? Uh, 2.01 does say out of town, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it doesn't say anything about overnight. So if I went, like his, his example of going to the legislature and coming back that day, is that, are you qualified for per diem? I wouldn't yeah. do it. I mean, that's. That's more trouble than it's worth for me. <laughs> I personally wouldn't pursue it. It may be eligible, but I wouldn't pursue it. Every that, oh, uh, that, the question is, is that? Yeah, yeah but this or that. some will. That's, that's the thing. Understood. Do you have a process for you? You wouldn't pursue I mean, I don't I don't know that you would have to pursue it if you somebody got to do it. If you go with it, okay. I would say the legislature, you can go up there and have a I know, Chris. I don't know what Chris's duty will be, how that will be changed, but she's always taking care of travel. So we were just talking about that <laughs> offline. And so we would suggest changing it to the general manager's office will process the reimbursement because it okay because because it's title specific right now. Okay. And she may not, she may be on vacation for a week or so. Yeah. And and then with the a new addition, right. are they going to set? How are they going to separate duties? And well, they, they do it every day, but they also substitute and cover. Yeah. When they're around. So it'll be similar to when Jenny was here. Right. Okay. You know, I would, I would suggest that probably uh, the new person, uh, Kaylee. Kaylee. I'm sorry, <laughs> Kaylee. Uh, maybe go ahead and continue the process because Chris did that before, right? Or was it Jenny? Chris always did travel. Chris did. Okay. Always. Okay. Right, and that's what I was thinking. So, this, so now she's in Chris's position. Okay, so do you think she'll do travel? <laughs> yep, she's, uh, she's learning fast. Okay. So that's the, that was the per diem, and you're going to check and see whether overnight, uh, yeah. the yeah. overnight whether or not, uh, or per diem would include go attending legislative functions out of out of yep. the city. Yep. Out, yep. out of the city. Yep. Okay. yep. And then the next is the board uh, board member travel. I didn't see any issues. These were all kind of redone when we had the special master. Right, and then you reviewed it two years ago. Again. Mm -hmm. it looked good to me. Yeah. Okay, those are the two that we can mark off, or that we can one that we can mark off, and one we're gonna. And then it's the information you finish the uh, board procedure. Do you guys want to call this procedure and call it policy? I would like to call it the board policy on rules of procedure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, the reason why I'm asking is is because we have a little, a little bit of a separation between what we call procedures and what we call policy. And that's what I was, but that was initially what was my, right. I said, this is a procedure, it's not a policy. Right. And Angie couldn't answer what the difference was. Right. So in our, in our mind, every, everything the board, yes, we can. Every, everything the board approves are policies. Anything that, you know, staff comes oh, yeah. up with and we sign off, 
just operating procedures. There is an ethics policy too that yeah. we get into as well. I'm going to have to go now. I, um, Please do. Um, and I'm, I'm going to have to follow. Okay. And this policy was developed by outside by council, by used by someone in UG. The ethics policy it is modeled after the unified. It's not completely. It doesn't completely replicate the unified government policy, but it was clearly modeled after it. I yeah. think at unification. That was very unification it together. Yeah. As I recall. So there are some. Do we have a? I, I know that I think we have an, administ an administrator and that's Ruth Benin, right? She's the administrator. Do we have an ethics commission where the five member board? Do we have an ethics? We can't keep people on it. I, that's, you know. I think Ruth just makes most right. of it. So we've got a lot of things in here about the ethics commission right. and about the group that, uh, that appoints the ethics commission, ethics commission that is. Not it doesn't exist. That doesn't yeah. exist. So how do we go about? It? What what do we do? You know, that's obviously up to the board. If you want to try and reformulate that, or if you want to just have the ethics administrator who actually makes the decisions and rules on matters and issues, opinions, and um, you know, you could have do that away with all the committee all the, the verbiage and stuff right. about the commission and stuff because it doesn't exist right or do we pay a stipend to commission members maybe then you could get people to and then you would need to it's a little it, to me it gets a little fuzzy on whose role is what you know between the administrator and the ethics committee or commission so if you do that you'd want to i think look at that their role and set that out and set the administrators roll out a little clearer. I, I think the administrator's role is clear. I mean, she, she or he, yeah, it's pretty clear. I think she is though. But she does everything now. <laughs> yeah. Do we need, is there, is there a need for a commission or do we just need an ethics administrator? All what, that came is, out. We haven't had a commission forever. It all came out of the special master when yep. there needed to be changes in just a lot of issues. And so that was one thing that that came out of that was to have, and that and it was just set up that way to have the commission and then people that appoint them. And, and it worked for a while, but then we couldn't, Keep people on the, you know. Some of the people that got on the committee was thinking that they were empowered to do more than what they what they were. So, a lot of a lot of our staff was going through just to visit with them, uh, so that they knew who we were. And we sat in a meeting, kind of get educated around how they were conducting their meetings. And the times I went, it was, well, you just cut my tree down, you butchered it, and stuff like this. You just did the issue, so it became and a lot of that. So wanted to like deal with employees and yep. staff too, which wasn't really that's not yep. their job. No. <laughs> yeah, it got to be. Ruth still gets questions and things sent to her, and she'll go, "This is not for the ethics administrator. This is something you should go back to either the staff or to the board with." So, but she still deals with a little bit of that. And then she is not, and then because it doesn't have to be an open meeting, she can fully look at everything and resolve it if it involves personnel or, or a member of the public, then we're not creating. Right. So we could revoke this ethics policy and then institute a different ethics. I mean, there's, you know, we need to have some sort of an ethics guidelines and things, but the commission and the committee to appoint a commission that don't exist. I mean, we're not involved. When did that happen? When did that This was in 2003, a, effective date 2004 is what it said. Yeah. I would always suggest to keep some type of ethics policy in place. Yes. Okay, if you want to, if you want to go in and modify it, okay, but 
I think we'll have our heads handed to us if we don't have. Yeah, exactly. we, have to have, I, uh, we have to have. And we have relied on the administrator too to issue right. rulings, and right. it is good. It is nice to have a because often they aren't legal issues, and to have her right. issue an opinion right. or ruling right. on a matter is has been helpful. Yes, it has been. And and I think that we need to have an ethics administrator, but this right. commission, right? No, we've got to really change that. that. I mean, we need either we either need to get get them on board and get and follow it, or not do it. Yeah, I think we need to make a change. You know. Tom, while we're on policy, I had somebody ask me, "Does the BPU have a policy about <laughs> putting signs on utility poles?" We have procedures. We don't have a policy for that. Well, like a garage sale? No, or uh, let's say we're coming up to a political election season now. Mm -hmm. I think somebody put some uh, some signs on a utility pole and somebody took it down. We absolutely should not be I, having signs on our utility pole. I don't I agree. Think so. but, do we, but we don't we have, have a policy. Poles. We don't need other signs. And that might also be covered under UG, like the right-of-way or so I might need to look that they don't up right away. Because, uh, right away. you know, if we don't have a policy, somebody, they're going to say, you know, you haven't got your, took my sign down off that pole and you don't have a policy, you know, you, you don't have a policy. We don't have, we have a, we don't have a policy. You don't but it might be the UG might have. Then UG might cover it. I will, I will check on that. Okay, I'm going to have to go. Okay, I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? I second it. Moved and seconded. Roll call. Mulvaney Henry. Aye. Groneman. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. That motion carries. This uh, session is adjourned. So I'll, I'll just need to know.